Man, this thing is cool. Look at how it detects the handprint. All right, so I've played around with this thing a little bit already, but I just wanted to show you what comes in the box. So we get an instruction manual. It's reasonably well written, but uh, it's pretty brief. And then we have the multimeter, temperature meter, whatever this thing is called. And uh, we have that right there. We have a charging cable, which is USB-C, which is awesome that they send that. And then we have a couple of oscilloscope probes. Let the folks at PCBWay.com help you on your next project. Go to PCBWay.com and check out their website. You'll see that they offer all kinds of services for PCB prototyping, PCB assembly services, which is actually on special right now. You can do flex or semi-rigid PCB solutions. You can do CNC machining and even 3D printing. If you need parts, tools, or components, check out PCBWay.com's module store. It'll help you get outfitted with all the stuff that you need. And if you have any questions, check out the PCBWay.com Help Center. They'll be able to get you sorted out and get the answers you need. So this is the Mustool MT-135. It has an infrared camera and it's a multimeter. And I was contacted by the folks at Banggood and they asked if I would do a review of this product. And of course I said yes. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by such things, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. These probes just feel like your run-of-the-mill uh, PVC coated probes. I don't think there's anything overly special about them. They do have these protective points on here. I guess I should call them point covers, but they are not shrouded where you can continue to do measurements with them. You have to take them off. I'm not sure if you can read that or not. These probes say Cat 3, 1000 volts, 10 amps. I'm not going to push 10,000 volts through these. This is about two and a half inches wide. It's about a one inch deep and five inches tall. So it's pretty small. It could fit in your pocket. I'd probably put it in a carrying case because I wouldn't want to damage the screen, which by the way is a touch screen. Here are the product specifications. I will let you freeze the frame and read these if you're interested in that. Okay, we have the multimeter charging via this USB-C cable plugged in right here. Note, it's not the cable that came with it. Also, when you connect this meter to a USB-C cable connected to your computer, you can also read the images that you save to the device. Okay, so here's the multimeter and we are booted up. You can set its boot configuration to go either into the camera first or to the multimeter first. And here we have it into the multimeter first. And we're set up for an auto reading. So what I wanna do is I wanna put that against the DMM check plus on our voltage standard. And here we go. And it's reading 5.001 volts DC. I believe it's calibrated for five exactly. Let's switch to AC. Okay, now we're set up to measure in AC voltage. And in auto, it detects it. The DMM check plus is calibrated at 4999, but I think that's within spec. Also, it's showing 100 hertz, which is correct. I should be able to hit this, and it should tell us. percent and it is a sine wave so it is 49 or 50 percent which looks right to me all right what i want to do now is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click the touch screen and we've switched over to ohms and then somewhere on here i have some resistance standards and this first one is 100 and we are at 101.1 this is 1000 and it's reading one kilo ohm this is 10k and it's 9.99 and this is 100 and it's 99.9 .9. all of that seems to be okay with me let's take a quick look at continuity so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click that we're getting a little bit of an audible beep i don't know if you can hear it but we're getting continuity there and then so in a real test or application i'm going to measure and see if we've got continuity across this bnc connector on the shield and we do let's see the shield against the center pin and we don't because we shouldn't. And then let's go center pin through center pin. And we have continuity there like we should. So that seems to work pretty well. Um, here we have capacitance. So let's go ahead and click that. And then on our DMM check plus, we have, um, this is one microfarad. So let's see what we see. And it's reading 1.075. This is point 
one microfarad. And that is 100 nanofarads, and that is correct. This is 0.01 microfarads, and that's 10. This is 0.001, and that's reading 0.9, which would be pretty close. That's a pretty low measurement. Um, I think I'm fine with that. All right, next we're going to go over here. We're going to check this diode tester. And I happen to have a diode right here. You can see this little baby. Oh, <clears throat> what you do when you do a diode test is it's really measuring the voltage across the diode. Diode. So let's go ahead and this should be about a 0.6. There we go, 0.624. And I think we're happy with that. Now here's a temperature tester or temperature. And it's telling me that it's 21 degrees centigrade. Um, let's go into the settings here. And maybe I can go into system settings. And here's our power boot. I told you I set it to multimeter. Automatic shutdown times at 10 minutes. Language is English. Setup time. I have no idea what that means, but I don't see anything about changing uh, <laughs> it from Fahrenheit to centigrade. Um, there's a backlight sound setting here. Awesome. I, I don't really care about that too much. Infrared camera, you can change your color gradient. We'll go back to this one. Um, and then the infrared camera, you can switch from uh, centigrade to Fahrenheit. And I did that. It's got emissivity. I have no idea what that is. And then we have temperature level. Um, multimeter, here we go. Let's go into multimeter settings. Oh, that's infrared camera. I must have a fat thumb. Let's go back to multimeter. Here's in multimeter mode. There's a bunch of stuff in here. And let's go over to temperature. And here's a, the hold this button. It says button mod. This one here, it says hold and range. I got it left on hold. Oh, this says default mode. It doesn't let me change it. I like the default mode to be auto. And then we have storage is 97% used because I have a picture that I took in there. See that? Let's go back. Go back. And then here's USB mod. And I guess this is if I'm connected to the computer. And then about, here's my firmware, serial number, and all that kind of stuff. I don't see a way. Actually, let's go back into multimeter. Change that button to range. Go back, go back, go back. All right, now here we are back in temperature. I bet you that does it. Well, I'm probably not smart enough to... F Can I change it here? I'm just not smart enough to change it to Fahrenheit. It has this button here, which will actually pull up a graph. But I guess I got to be in volts. Let's go to volts AC. There we go. I don't know what this is going to do, but we are set on AC voltage on our DMM check plus. So I wonder what happens. Okay, you can see this green line. It's actually taking measurements. Let's stop and see. Oh, it drops down. Let's go back. And I guess that's just reading, not the sine wave, but that is just reading our actual measurement. Huh, that's pretty interesting. All right, well, let's get over to the camera because I believe that's what everybody wants to see anyway. We're going to roll in some video in a minute, but to hear some pictures that I took using the infrared camera on the multimeter. And if you take a look at it here, this is my space heater. And then you can see that where the center point is, it's 234 degrees Fahrenheit. The red marker shows 318 and the blue shows 62. That's uh, pretty impressive. Now these are saved in a bitmap format that doesn't have the greatest resolution, but I think it's serviceable and good enough. This one's the extension cable where I have the space heater plugged in. And again, you can see the center is 74 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems about right. Uh, the green over on the upper left-hand corner says 61, and that seems about right. And then the high point or the red marker is on the actual plug, and it's reading at 114.
So I'm having a pretty good time playing around with the multimeter. And what we have here is a load tester from Maker Fabs, and I have it connected to a 12 volt power supply. And what you can see right here, it's reading 13.2 volts and it's drawing 5.9 amps. I believe this is a fine adjustment and I can turn this up a little bit higher. As I turn it up, it is spinning the fan a little faster and a little faster. Let's go up to six and a half. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the infrared camera to see if, if there's a heat signature coming off of this thing. Now it does have a pretty big fan here to reduce that. But uh, all right, here we go. There you go. And you can see the center temperature is 74, 75. It looks like it's going to heat up. And then we have a hot spot down at the lower bottom at around 92. And uh, that probably will go up a little bit too. And then our cool spot is 67 uh, degrees. But that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up a little bit more. Hold on. Okay, you can see that we're putting a load on the power supply. So our voltage has dropped down to 12.6. But now our amps are up to 10. Let's see what's happening here. And then you can see the bottom part of the device is increasing. We're at 101, 102. We were at 92 before. But uh, this is pretty good for looking at electronics and stuff like that that you may be working with and using this device to see where you potentially have a hot spot or heat loss. Anyhow, I think let's go into settings real quick. And then if I go in here and I go to infrared camera, we have these other color palettes. So let's go ahead and change to this one. And then I want to go back. And I want to go back again. Yeah, I don't know if that color palette's working. Uh, it looks a little different to my naked eye than it does on the, on the screen. I shouldn't have put my hand behind it. Let's go ahead and change it again. Infrared camera. And then it has... Let's try this one on the end. We'll go back. Back. And there we are. It's more of like a night vision type thing. So you can tailor it to meet your specific needs. Anyhow, that's going to wrap up the video. I want to say thanks to Banggood for sending this to me. I'm actually really enjoying it. And I want to say thanks to everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.